Hey, I'm Roy Richardson, and we're going to talk briefly about using MySQL Workbench with MySQL. Um, in this particular scenario, we're using the latest version of MySQL and the latest version of MySQL Workbench, but this should still work even if you're running 5.7. It should still work just the same. So, all right. So, assuming, and if you're in my CPT242 class, then you've downloaded a file called Class Files, and we'll do a extract. I like WinZip, so I'm going to have it extract to a folder called Class Files. And uh, so then go to that folder. Let me figure out where did you do my folder? Anyway, hang on. And here's my folder Class Files. All right. And because when I created it, I was on a Mac. All right. So, so. There are three things here that are pertinent to CPT242, but these things also give you an example of how to use MySQL Workbench. So don't let that hold you up. This is also going to talk about how to use MySQL Workbench and common things you run into. So this is assuming you already have MySQL Workbench up and running. And right now, I only have the default system database that came with MySQL. So for a classroom environment I'm using, I have a, a DB script that creates a structured query language script that will create our databases needed for the, for the my classroom environment. And I can drag it over and it just won't open. It just laughs at me. Ha ha ha. So if I go here and choose Open SQL, I can go to the folder and click on create databases and we'll open this script okay so here's the script and if you know a little bit about structured query language even if you don't so we'll talk about the first line right here says drop database if exists AP so it's gonna check and see if there's a database called AP if there's not then it's going to delete it and then the next step is going to create the database and it's gonna name it AP and then it's going to do use. So this is very important. The use statement is important because it says, by the way, everything I tell you to do after this, I want you to direct that effort toward the AP database. All right. Now, this script creates all the databases needed for my classroom environment. I can actually go and I click on this cursor right here, this icon right here. It says execute the statement under the keyboard cursor. What that's saying is, only run this one line that I have my cursor highlighted on and it will run that line. Of course it's going to error that says hey that uh, that database doesn't exist and it's right it does not. Then I could click on this line and run that same thing and say hey create database. Wonder will affect it. So that database is created. Now you won't see it till I hit refresh over here and now that database or schema as my, as my SQL calls it um, this is also true with other databases that cause that. Of course, it has no tables, it has no views, no source, no functions. It's just a blank canvas right now. So if you keep looking, the next thing you do is once you have a database, then you create tables. So here it's creating tables, and then it's going, it's going to create a table called General Ledger Account, and then it's going to specify the variables in that and tell what variable types. So here it's going to create a field called account number, it's an integer, it's the primary key, the primary key being the identifying key that makes it easier to search within that particular table to, to match things up, and then account description, var char, so variable character, and it's going to be 50, and it's unique, so it means that you can't have the exact same thing in the others, and so it tries to make sure each field is unique, and it's just going to keep on going through the process. And then later in the script, it actually um, loads data into the general ledger accounts for example and it says hey load into general ledger values and this is the values and notice that if there's spaces in what you're going to load it's got single tick marks after it, you could also use double double quotes as well and that's fine but if there's a space in the information you put into a variable then it needs to have quotes around it uh, numbers it says yep yeah, I like them go ahead and go for it so then here's the other icon you have. This is execute and where it runs the entire script. It doesn't stop anywhere. It just keeps chugging along and runs the entire script. So 
we're going to do that. I'm going to click on this lightning bolt, and as it says, execute the selected portion of the script. Now, I could have a section highlighted, and it would just run that. But I'm going to hit this button. Of course, it's going to drop my AP table that I had, and it's going to go through. Um, it's fussing about some syntax. But anyway, so it goes through the whole process and creates all of my databases. Now, you don't see them over here yet. I have to click on this refresh icon right here. And so now I have that AP table. So that's created. All right. And it is fussing about some permissions. But let's go make sure the AP table got created. And now we have tables. All right. So there goes tables. And these are the names of the different tables. And vendors. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say select rows limit 1,000. So this will run a query that gives me the first thousand records out of this table. Now I happen to know this table only has a couple of hundred at the most, so I'm going to get the whole table, everything that's in it data-wise. So hit select rows, and so then here is what you get for your troubles. All right, so select star from, star says give me everything. Now that's not the most efficient way, it is the quickest way to get data out of a database, but a database administrator would say, uh, you know, I'd like it a lot better if you'd write that query where it specifies exactly what you need so that the query is more efficient. Uh, that, that's a debate for another day, but for a classroom environment, this doesn't matter. You should be fine. So here we are just doing, now I notice there's some grant that's fussing about a test user didn't create and then, but it did create the other rows. All right. So that was how you create the database. Now I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close the blank query out. So right here, if you want to write a query, you click on this right here and it opens the query window and I can do select star from and you can drag and drop in here. So I can go here vendors and drop that right there and semicolon and then run the query and it would run my query. So same thing with any of the others. I can go over here and drag invoices and drop it and then I like to put the semicolon at the bottom so that my SQL says oh yeah you're in that's the end of that query and I hit the lightning bolt and there's that ticker table and it shows you all the data that's in that table so great thing to drag and drop now let's go and create another database so I can show you something here all right so I'm gonna do open and I'm gonna create this database right here the EX database and I'm going to hit the lightning bolt and have it work and do its thing. All right, so that's done. And then I'm gonna open another one. I can also open right here as well, two places here. I'm gonna create the OM database and I'm gonna run that query and that's gonna create it. And it created that successfully. You don't see it over here, why? Because you gotta go here and hit this refresh button and now it shows up. Now, here's a key thing to remember. Notice that the OM database is highlighted now. That's the last thing I created. So if I go back this window and I run this query, it's going to fail. It's like, uh, I don't, you know, it says table OM invoices doesn't exist. So what it's telling me is that, hey, I, I that table doesn't exist in the one that you are currently using. So there's several ways to do it. One, I can do use AP semicolon, and that will tell it, oh, by the way, before you run this query, make the AP the active database that I'm running queries against. So I'll hit execute, and I'll you know what? I'll just run that one line, and then notice that now the AP is now bold, which says my default database, and then I'll hit that lightning bolt, and so I get my query. Then the other way, so let me show you this. Let's say for example, I have OM use OM database, and I'll have that line I run. And that's now OM is now the default. However, if I run this query, it's going to fail. Why? Because OM the invoice doesn't exist. So what I can do is I can do ap.invoices. And notice that it has uh, basically auto, you know, autofill for you. So that by typing that AP dot, say I typed in AP dot there, it is able to, it brings up a list and I can do choose vendors and then even though I have this use statement right here to make the OM my default database because in my select statement I'm saying use ap.vendors it's saying oh I want you to use the ap table 
uh, AP database and then pull the, use the vendors table in it. So we'll watch this. I hit the execute. And so even though first line says, hey, use OM, it then goes and hits the AP table and pulls back my data. So that works, see? All right. And so that's what I wanted to show you now. So once you have, um, hang on, I'll do cancel. I'll hit query. So once you have a query window open, usually you can go and here's you know, the class files. So here's book scripts. For those that are using the book for our class, I don't have the book right beside me. <gasps> anyway, go into a folder and here are example scripts for my classroom environment. Usually I can drag and drop. It's not letting me do that. So that makes me kind of sad. Um, it used to be as long as you had a query window open, it would let you do that. Oh, by the way, one other thing I meant to tell you is that, for example, if you want to change what your default database is that you're working against, you can actually double click on it and it will then make it the default database. So if I hit a refresh here, you should now see the EX database. It's thinking longer. Sometimes Workbench takes a little dirt nap. I don't know why. It does this little thing where it's like, <gasps> I'm so confused and thinking. All right. Anyway, you double click on OM and it makes it the default database. So now if I run a query here, it's going to assume that query is supposed to be going against the OM database. All right. So anyway, we're going to go here and click here. And I'm going to go up a level and book scripts. And I'm going to pick. All these babies and those so it will only let me open one at a time so i'm going to do open so now that's my query there for the invoices now again because the ap table is not my default database if i run this query it's going to error out so, uh, dude there's not no i don't have that no okay so i have to go here and double click on ap and then i can run the query and you know it runs successfully now I've got multiple scripts going on here, so what I really should do is highlight this in sections. And if I click here and I hit this cursor, this semicolon here acts like a stop sign and says, Yep, only run to there, stop there, don't go any further. So that way, if I click on this line and I click on create table, it's of course going to tell me, Hey, that table already exists, so I can't do that for you. And then I have this line, I can click alter database add balance so it does that successfully it runs all the way through here and adds a balance due to my table that didn't already exist I can then click on this one and it's going to run all the way to the semicolon like that and then alter table invoices I'll run that so you know see right here it says because I already have a balance due column it's grumpy about that so that's why that didn't run all right so that's the basics on how to use the MySQL workbench and unfortunately um, this update of my MySQL does not allow me to just drag and drop files into it like it used to so that's a little disconcerting and makes me sad because I really like that feature because I would basically take all my book scripts and open them up and then work but it doesn't let you do it anymore so that was a feature of the 6.x version of workbench where it would let me do that so you have to go and open those scripts one by one unfortunately um, I go and I can have more than one open at a time though so that's okay I can literally go and do one by one and click and open all these scripts and go back and forth between them all right and notice the file ends in .sql so the problem is though if I go here and I double click on one of these it may not know what to open it with now see so it actually takes me into my C word oh wait a second that's not what I want so in order to use the files for the class and actually have them show up in my SQL workbench you actually have to go and and do you know SQL open a script and then pick that script so you know chapter 2 for example you know, so that opens all the scripts now and then I can hit the lightning bolt and run that query and there you go alright so that's just some basics for my using MySQL um, the other thing is say you write a query and you love the query you wrote and you want to save it uh, you can do file and save script or save script as so it already has a name 
So I want to say it with a different name, and I can say, you know, here, my script. Don't forget to keep the my the, the, the dot SQL extension at the end of it so that you can see it. If you are running Windows and you've got it hiding known extensions, then you may need to go to Control Panel and be sure to set the Control Panel. See that 